بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اور السلام علیکم in the last week uh, we discussed about uh, we started chapter number 4 and we discussed about the fluid kinematics and we discussed flow description we discussed about the euler equation the lagrange equation sorry the euler approach and the lagrange approach and we discussed about the material derivative and we came to know that material derivative derivative is d by dt of the any function this it can be any function material derivative is also called total derivative is equivalent to partial by partial t of that function plus u into partial by partial x of the function plus small v into partial by partial y of the function and finally w into partial by partial z of the function it is like that this is called the material derivative of the total derivative of any function where u and w are the velocity components along the x y and z direction of the velocity field or the velocity vector the velocity vector v is equivalent to u i plus v j plus w k so u v and w are the components of the velocity along x y and z direction and then we solved some problems related to the is there any question from the last lecture or any question regarding the problems i gave you as form assignment is everything clear sir wo last lecture mein last problem humne beech mein chhoda tha aapne kaha tha wahi se wo karenge which problem this problem sir jisme wo differential equation tak pahunche the aur usko solve karna tha ye i think ye jo second last hai is slide pe okay just to giving you an idea about that problem जल्दी क्विकली से डिस्कस करते हैं सो इन दिस प्रॉब्लम वी वर गिवन टू फंक्शंस ऑफ द वेलोसिटी दैट इज यू द यू कंपोनेंट ऑफ द वेलोसिटी एंड द वी कंपोनेंट ऑफ द वेलोसिटी प्रोवाइड दैट सी इज अ कांस्टेंट एंड इट इज आस्क दैट शो दैट दीस आर द कंपोनेंट्स फॉर दिस इक्वेशन This equation for the statement x square y minus y cube is equal to constant. So what we know is that dy by dx is equivalent to v by u, right? So if we take v and u, we come to know that minus two. x y c will cancel with c and divided by x square minus y square this is we where we left right so ye complete ho gayi thi and now we want to show that this is the equation for this function u and v so in order to do that we see that we cannot separate the variables in this form because it is an implicit form right right you cannot separate the variables in this equation so we cannot get this equation from this form so what we can do is we can take the derivative of this equation that is x square y minus y cube by 3 
equal to constant. If we can take the derivative of this equation and prove that it is equal to this, the derivative from this equation is equal to this, then these two are, these two components are for this equation, right? So what we do is we just apply the differential to the both side of the equation, that is d x square y minus y cube by 3. And on the right side, when we take differential of a constant, it becomes 0. The first function x square y is u into v form, multiplication of two functions, so we take the derivative one by one. First we take x square as constant, then we'll have differential of y will be dy, right? Then we'll take the differential in the other form, keeping y constant, then the differential will be y, 2x dx. And finally we'll have 3y cube, 3y square by 3 dy equal to 0, right? 3 will cancel with 3. We can take common dy part. These two, we can take dy part as common. So we get x square minus y square into y equal to minus 2x y dx and rearranging we get dy by dx equal to the same what we got from the velocity functions right Is it the same? Is it equivalent to the one we got from the velocity function? Yes, sir. Yes. So hence, we have proved that this equation of streamline is for those velocity functions. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there are a few more problems on the slide. slides. I have shared them with you. You can solve those problems. If you have any question, you can discuss them in the next lecture as well. So these are another problem and you can solve these and uh, they are not much difficult if you are uh, versed with the concepts of the material derivative. So if you know the material derivative in detail, you can just solve these problems. Moving on to, to today's topics. Once again, we will discuss about the streamline coordinates and we'll discuss the effect of the streamline coordinates on the uh, acceleration. That is how acceleration is uh, varied because we know that we calculate acceleration from the total derivative. So we'll discuss discussing about the if we, we use the streamline coordinates uh, because till this point we have been using this uh, normal coordinates x, y, z coordinates. But what if we use the streamline coordinates? And from the previous chapter, we know that streamline coordinates are much more convenient to work in the fluid flow as compared to the uh, regular coordinates x, y, and the Cartesian coordinates, right? So we'll be discussing okay. uh, about the streamline coordinates and how the material derivative will change if we use streamline coordinates. Okay, so you are familiar with the streamline coordinates. The streamline coordinates are basically two coordinates that are along the streamline. Streamline, uh, the coordinate along the streamline is called the s coordinate, and the other coordinate is called the normal to the streamline, as shown in this figure. So the flow plane is covered with orthogonal guard of net. Like we have to define each coordinate with each streamline. We have to define coordinate along each streamline. So for each streamline, there is a relative coordinate and then we have the normal coordinate along that. At any point, the S and direction and, and direction are perpendicular, but the lines of constant S or constant are not necessarily straight because the streamlines are curved mostly. So it is not necessarily that the S and N are constant or they are straight. So what we do, we define the streamline coordinates along the velocity always because we know that velocity is tangent to the streamline. So what we do, we define the streamline direction 
along the velocity vector. So the velocity vector is dependent on the streamline coordinate and normal coordinate, right? Is it clear? Yes, sir. So we know that the velocity vector will depend on the S as well as the N direction. So the velocity vector along the streamline, this is, uh, let me explain it here. So we know that velocity vector will be having two components, right? One that is this component that is V function of S and N and this function is along the streamline clear v is function of s and n and this is the component along the streamline clear along the unit vector of the streamline yes sir yes sir just like the component u would say that this is function of x yes, and y and z as well as the time but it is along the unit vector i. So here is the same concept that v is function of s and n, but it is along the streamline direction. So if we take the total derivative for the velocity field that is along the s and n direction, then we will have two components of acceleration as well. One component that is along the streamline and the component that is along the normal. So total derivative acceleration in this case will be a s plus a n. And we can see that from this distribution here from this description. We can further discuss it in detail. So in this situation we can see that we have two components of the velocity. Uh, we know that velocity is a function of V which is S comma N, right? And it is along the normal direction, but this streamline direction is also dependent on, because it will change with change in streamline, or it will change with change in normal. So this S is also dependent on S and coordinates, right? Is this thing clear? Yes, sir. So if we take the total derivative of this velocity, dv by dt, what we will be doing, we'll be taking the total derivative of these two components, right? v, which is function of s and n, and into this other function, s cap, which is direction basically of the velocity and this is again function of S and N. So which rule you will apply? Uh, sir, uh, product rule. So apply the product rule, yes. So you will be getting the total derivative of the velocity with respect to time. This is total derivative of the velocity into S cap, right? Plus the total derivative of S cap into velocity, right? Yes, sir. Then you will have description for each of these. The total derivative expansion for each of these terms. This expansion is explained here. Expansion is explained here. So can you do this? Uh, there are two coordinates only. Velocity will change with respect to time, so partial v by partial t. Velocity will change with respect to the s coordinate and s coordinate will change with respect to time. Plus velocity will change with respect to the normal coordinate and the normal coordinate will vary with respect to time. Is it clear? And then again, yes, when you apply on the S direction, the total derivative, then S di direction will vary with respect to time, and S direction will vary with respect to itself, and then 
the s direction of time and that's and that we know that this term will be equivalent to what these two terms will cancel out right so we can apply the following simplifications we know that there is no explicit ex dependence of velocity on time on a scale that is a streamlined coordinate system in streamlined coordinate system थोड़ा सा बेयर करें मेरे साथ आवाज आपको आ जाएगी थोड़ी सी अब क्लियर है मैं अपनी लोकेशन चेंज करता हूँ थोड़ी सी जीरो Zero, mm-hmm. right? There is no dependence of the streamline coordinate or the streamline direction on the time, right? So this term would also be zero. So the term we have written for the material derivative here, that is, this term would be zero. This term would be zero. Clear? Yes, sir. And if n is constant along the streamline, there is no change in n. Which means that d n by d t would be zero here, and it would be zero here, right? Is it clear? Yes. Can you n वाला n वाला से दोबारा बता दो? N is constant, ना? Particles when flowing along the streamline, n will remain constant. so when n okay. is constant it derivative respect to any function like function with respect to x with respect to time with respect to s will remain zero right uh, yes it is so it means that after the simplification we will get acceleration as this equation that is acceleration would be equal to v partial v by partial s into the S direction plus v square by r n direction. We know that this is the same equation we have already studied in chapter number three. Have we studied this equation already? That acceleration has two components: the streamline component and the normal component. Yes. You sir. remember that? Yes. Sir. So acceleration. Field along the streamline normal coordinate is the same as we have already studied. There is no difference in that. So, using the streamline coordinates is more convenient as compared to the Cartesian coordinates. So, there is only the convective acceleration. There is no local acceleration here, right? Yes. So now the other issue is that, and now we are very well aware how the acceleration will vary, how we will see the material derivative, and how material derivative is applied in Cartesian coordinates, or and how it is applied in the um, streamline coordinates. But now the issue is that 
in most of the cases, like you are studying thermodynamics, all the laws of the physics or the thermodynamics are based on system approach. What is the system approach? Anyone? What is system? Uh, sir, uh, what is uh, the system? Under observation, the part of the, uh, anything under uh, observation, having fixed boundaries, whose mass cannot change, right? Whose mass is fixed? Yes. Mass can go in or out of the system, right or wrong? Is this statement correct? If I say a uh, mass can go inside the system or outside the system. Mass can flow. Yes, that's the other type. So normally if we're talking about a fixed system, there can be no mass change. The mass will remain conserved. Only there are three possible interactions with the system. That is the heat. Heat and work, sir. Work, right? And the third one is the mass interaction when the system is flexible, right? When there is flexible system having mass changes, but we are not talking about that system. We are talking about a fixed system. So all of the laws of thermodynamics are based on a system approach, right? So when you are. Yes, sir. So if this is your system, you're fixing its mass. So when mass is fixed, it means you are tagging the particles. You are fixing the particles. Whenever you will apply some law, you will apply that law to these particles. That law will be with respect to these particles, right? So this is basically which approach? The Lagrange approach. You are tagging the mass. You are tagging specific mass. You are studying specific mass. So it means it is the Lagrange approach. But we have already started the Euler approach is more convenient in fluid mechanics. Why it is more convenient? Let's say this is a body and air is passing across it. We are interested in seeing the effect of the air passing over this body, the force that this air will exert on this body, right? Yes. Sir. So always there will be a different mass of air that will pass across this body, different with different properties, right? So we cannot use the system approach. We cannot define, okay, we are taking this mass of the air and we'll see that how this interact with this. No, we are having fresh air every time. So what we need to do, we need to define some convenient mechanism that can help us to translate these laws from system approach to the Euler approach, from the Lagrange approach to the Euler approach. That translation is provided to us by the Reynolds transport theorem. That translation is provided by the Reynolds transport theorem or RTT. This helps us to convert system approach to control volume approach or in other words the Lagrange description to the Euler description. Is it clear? Yes, sir. And the reverse is also possible. That is the control volume approach could be converted to the system approach if we have knowledge of the Renault transport program and the other approach could be con converted into the Lagrange approach. System approach is the Lagrange approach and the control volume approach is the Euler approach. Now we need to understand the concept of the control volume. What is a control volume so that we can develop the Renault transport theorem? So control volume, it can be moving, it can be uh, deflating, it can be inflating, it can be changing volume. But we, right now we are discussing only the fixed control volume. Deform, we are not discussing about the deformable control volume. What's the control volume? Let's say this is a pipe and water is flowing in it. What I do, I define an imaginary surface. I define an imaginary surface across this pipe starting from here to here like this okay what's happening water will start come here 
pass this surface will occupy the shape of this control volume and then move out from the surface right and this process will continually happen so now i know that how much amount of water is entering my control volume how much amount of water is leaving my control volume so the mass of the control volume will always change because i am not fixing this i am only defining an Im imaginary boundary across which water can in come inside and then go outside if the flow rate is coming into the volume is more then the mass of this control volume will increase if the flow rate is less as compared to the outlet out outflow then this volume of this control volume will decrease the mass of this control volume will decrease so control volume is an imaginary surface imaginary volume so this volume is called the control volume this volume is called control volume and the surfaces forming this control volume are called the these are these surfaces are called control surfaces all of these surfaces they are called control surfaces or control boundaries a control volume can be fixed a control volume can be moving a control volume can be deforming a control volume can be non deforming there can be different types of control volume but right now we are interested in a fixed non deforming control volume right now our aim is to understand fixed non deforming control is it clear the concept of control volume yes sir so if it is clear then we move to the formulation of the renault transport theorem an example of the deforming control volume would be a balloon you define the boundary of the balloon as a control volume so what happens when you deflate the balloon or inflate the balloon the when you inflate the volume of the balloon will increase so that's an example of the deforming control volume when you deflate it the volume the air will discharge out so that's a deforming control volume so now we discuss the renault transport theorem and for that you need to understand some property we consider some property b that is an arbitrary property okay this capital b that is an arbitrary property of the system of the control volume we don't know what it is and there is an other property that's related to b by mass that is small b is m times the capital b sorry capital b is m times the small b b can be any property let's say for example if i say this capital b is m then what would be small b what would be the value of the small b one ho jayega sir yes small one. b would be unit if i say capital b is kinetic energy then small b would be v square by 2 kaise hoga per unit mass very good and if i say small b is uh, capital b is momentum p then small b would be velocity moment velocity, velocity. so is it clear the property capital b and the small b the relationship between the capital b and the small b yes the capital b yes. is always dependent on the mass right it is dependent on the mass is it clear so it would be an extensive property so capital b would always be a extensive property and small b is independent of the mass it is the quantity per unit mass right it is the quantity or it is the property per unit mass
So it is the intensive property. It is small b is intensive property of the system or the control volume. And this is the extensive properties because it is always dependent on the mass. If mass will change, this property will change. Clear? Yes. Yes, sir. So if B is mass times small b, and we know that mass is density into volume. So we can write B is rho into volume into small b. If I talk that B is of a small unit area property, and then we say it's the property of the whole system, what I will do, I will sum all the Bs over this whole system, right? I can write that B would be yes, sir. integration of the row B with respect to the volume over the whole system, right? If it is a system property. And if it is a control volume property, then it would be the integral over the control volume Right. Clear. Depending upon the type of the system we are considering, that is system or the control volume. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So how we define the relationship between the two? Now we are interested in developing the relationship between these two properties. So what we do is we consider a system and a control volume. Is this figure clear? Yes, sir. Is this figure? Okay. In this figure, let's uh, let me redraw it for you in order to have better understanding. Because I believe I'm missing something. So let's say this is a pipe like this. There is inflow from here and there is outflow from here. If I try to define a system, there is red lines on my system, okay? This is the system. What will happen with time? I'm drawing it at t equals to zero. At the same time, I am defining a control volume which is equivalent of this system. So the system and the control volume will be same at t equals to zero. So if I take any property B of the system, that should be equal to B of the control volume, right? At yes. time equals to zero. Yes. 
Now what happens after some time t plus delta t? We have again the same configuration. Because system is talking about a fixed mass, right? So there will be inflow from here, there will be outflow from here. But now, after time t plus delta t, what will happen? The system will move from here to here to here. Right? But the control volume will remain Same. fixed at its location. Clear? Yes, sir. Sir, so, why are you fixed at control volume? Because we have defined it from our own. We have defined it ourselves. We say it's Sir, we have defined it from the system. Kiya tha na. But system is about a fixed mass. System is like about a tagging a particle. I have tagged a specific volume. I have tagged a specific Thik mass. Hai, sir. Hai, sir. So yeah. I will keep following that mass. That's the Lagrange approach. But in control volume, we have defined it is fixed at place. Mass can enter this control volume. Mass can leave this control volume. But it will remain fixed at its place. So clear? Yes, sir. Clear. So now I take that picture. So this is what happening. OK. So the system has moved here. From this location, this initial location. So if I ask you to write the properties. B system. at t plus delta t. Should be equivalent to. What? Uh, integral. Just simple properties. Just say we t zero pay b system is equal to. B control volume. So T plus delta T. Pe hoga? So inter integral rho B. There is no need for the integral this time. You will just tell me okay what has happened. If my system ki mass equal to control volume, ke to kya hoga hoga? The property of the control volume, right? Plus the amount which has entered the control volume, that is B1, right? Minus the amount that has left the control volume. Yes. Clear? Is your question the nearest me? Is a majagi? Yes, So if it is clear, just call him. So at initial time, it is B system equals to B control volume and at time t plus delta t it is b control volume at t plus delta t minus b1 which is the mass entering the system plus b2 that is the mass leaving the system clear obviously i'm going to sign reverse yes this is my plus and this is minus the amount that is entering and amount that is leaving b1 is the amount entering and b2 is the amount leaving so if I want to see the time rate of change of this property. Uh, 
that would be partial by partial t right of every term थोड़ा सा मेरे लिए वो लिखना थोड़ा सा डिफिकल्ट होगा सिंबल्स बहुत ज्यादा हैं सो आई जस्ट टेक दिस इक्वेशन देयर सो दिस इज द इक्वेशन एट t प्लस डेल्टा t सो विल जस्ट टेक टाइम डेरिवेटिव रिस्पेक्ट टू ऑफ ईच टर्म सो वी टेक टाइम डेरिवेटिव हियर वी टेक टाइम डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस होल टर्म पार्शियल बाय Clear? Can you do that? You can learn a time derivative to learn a very simple. Excuse me, sir. ये जो आपने ऊपर mass जो है add किया है इसमें control volume. तो ये basically अब ये system approach को control volume approach में convert कर रहे हैं. बिल्कुल. ऐसे ही. Right. Basically, we are trying to write. कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम तो मैं आपको यहाँ पे कैन यू सी दिस पिंक लाइन नजर आ रही लाइन जो मैं ड्रॉ कर रहा हूँ नहीं नजर आ रही होगी ये थोड़ी सी थिन है अब नजर आ रही है ये लाइन जो मैंने ड्रॉ की आपके सामने नहीं सर विजिबल नहीं है नो सर सर आप ये थोड़ी देर लगाती हैं अब आइए आप आइए लाइन मैंने ड्रॉ की है इस सामने पिंकिश लाइन है दिस इज योर क्या है जी आपकी सिस्टम वॉल्यूम कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम ठीक है अब मैं आपके सामने ड्रॉ करूंगा रेड लाइन ये रेड लाइन नजर आ रही है आपको दिस इज योर सिस्टम सिस्टम मैंने लिखनी है सिस्टम की प्रॉपर्टी आई हैव टू राइट सिस्टम प्रॉपर्टी बी सिस्टम इन टर्म्स ऑफ कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम तो इनिशियली क्या था सिस्टम और कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम इक्वल थे राइट सर बट व्हाट हैज हैपेंड नाउ द सिस्टम इज इक्वल टू वॉल्यूम जो कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम माइनस This region, right? System is now equal to this control volume minus this region, the one region, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And plus this region two, this new region which yes, it has moved. This has happened at time t plus delta t. Initially, they were same. Is it clear now? Yes, it's clear. Okay, thank you, sir. Now we'll just take the time derivative. By time equals t. That is, at initially partial by partial t, B system should be equal to at time equals to zero. It should be equal to partial by partial t of B control volume. And the other term would be time derivative of this. Form so that I will take from there. Partial by partial t or so I'm just be doing some manipulations here. The other term would be at time t plus delta t. Okay. So at time t plus delta t, we'll have B system change in property. That is B system t plus delta t minus B system at t. Right. The change will be property in The property at time t plus delta t minus property at time t. Clear? And now we know that B system in terms of the control volume form. So we have just substituted the control volume functions here. So we get this, and we also know that B system at t is B control volume. Can okay? we will replace this with B control volume of t? Clear? we are trying to see the difference in the change in the property with respect to time most of the time we are interested in this thing right the change in energy with respect to time the momentum the change in momentum the 
force per unit time, we interest uh, velocity per unit time, we're interested in such kind of property. So we are saying, trying to have the change in system property, that is delta B system by delta T. The change in system property would be equal to B of system at final time, that is T plus delta T. minus B of system at time, initial time, right? So the delta divide this by delta T. Clear? We know this transformation of system into control volume. We know this transformation of the system into control volume form. We have the linkage between these two properties. So in this above relation, we have just replaced that linkage. This is the B system form at T plus delta T in the control volume function. And this is the replaced by this function. Clear? Yes, sir. Clear. Now, if we just rearrange. Now we have just rearranged the equation. That is, we have combined the B control volume T plus delta T term with the B control volume at time T minus B1 T plus delta T by delta T plus B2 by T plus delta T. Is this form clear? This last form which I have highlighted? Yes, sir, clear. It's, it's just a rearrangement. Now, if you apply limit delta T equals to zero on this, what will happen? Do you remember mathematics of first year or second year? The derivative chapter, chapter number two of second year book. Rate of change of the property. So the first term will be a derivative of the control volume with respect to time, right? Yes, sir. So that would be equivalent to this term. Do you understand this term? This is the ab initio method, AB method. So the first term would be representing the change in control volume with respect to time, and we can write it as partial by partiality of the integral control volume, rho p dv. Is it clear this term? Sir, We have already studied that. Just talking about b is mass times small b right and mass is density times b into the volume of the small particle or the small control volume and if we want to have it over the whole system then we will integrate it with respect to the control volume in case of control volume and if it is a control volume property and if it is a system property then we will integrate it with respect to the system boundaries clear Okay, sir, clear. So, is this last term clear now? How we are getting the derivative form? Okay. What about B1 and B2? B1 would be density at point one into property in point one into volume one, right? And B2 would be yes, sir. row 2 B2 into volume at point 2. So that's not difficult. And we can write volume as now that's the thing to understand. We go back to this figure here. So let's say this is some length uh, L2, right? And this is some length. So that is L1 and this is L2. We know that volume is. We all know volume is. Yes, volume is equivalent to. Derivative. What? 
सर हम वहां से निकल एसटी क्रॉस मैस एसटी ओवर मैस नॉट दैट एरिया इनटू सर एनीथिंग सर हमारे पास इक्वेशन आ गई इनटू लेंथ राइट यस सर दिस एरिया वुड बी द क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया ऑफ द कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम बाउंड्री राइट सो दिस इज द कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम ए वुड बी दिस क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया राइट इनटू द पेज एरिया जस्ट लाइक दिस right this would be a and l would be the change in this distance right and that we know that distance is velocity into time clear so volume would be area into velocity into time is it clear Yes. Sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So here we have rho into b into volume. So we have written volume as area into length for the first section. So it would be area of the first section into the velocity of the first section. That is the velocity entering amount of the fluid entering the boundary into delta t and similarly b2 would be density of 2 into property at point 2 into area 2 velocity 2 into delta t so is is this relationship clear these two relationship are they clear yes sir yes sir so now th there is delta t so if we write that b1 is the inflow and we apply limit delta t approaches to 0 we'll cancel this delta t with this delta t we'll have row row 1 a1 v1 to b1 for the time being take b1 equals to 1 so row 1 a1 v1 is what it is the mass flow rate right so b1 is representing the amount of the property entering the control volume and b dot out is representing the amount of property leaving, leaving the control volume leaving the control so they are basically inflow and outflow of the property from the control volume the change that is happening within the control volume is governed by these two is it clear is this formula and yes, this formula sir. clear these two equations are here in front of you clear hain limit delta t approaches zero and b dot out yes sir clear yes, sir, so what we have on the right side is now the d by dt of p system we got this by applying take me its derivative equals to partial by partial t of the b control volume not like o b dv over the control volume plus rho not rho b in b dot n minus b dot out the physical explanation of the this is called the reynolds transport theorem this is helping us to relate the system quantity with the control volume the system property with the control b dot in excuse me sir b dot in negative mein mujhe sir matlab b1 negative ka equation sorry i isko reverse b dot n ये भी हम ये साइन अभी इसकी एक्सप्लेनेशन जो है थोड़ी सी जब तक हम बी को डिफाइन नहीं कर लेते हैं ना तब तक ये एक्सप्लेनेशन साइन जो है बस इनको इसी तरह याद रख लेंगे अभी माइनस और प्लस है बट वी नीड टू हैव द राइट साइन ओरिएंटेशन फॉर दिस उसके लिए हम एक वेक्टर डिफाइन करेंगे दैट वी विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल के वो साइन कैसे आ रहा है जब तक हम बी प्रॉपर्टी डिफाइन नहीं कर लेते बी है क्या चीज ठीक है तो इसके लिए बी से हम इसको सर दिस इज द बेसिकली रेनॉल्ड ट्रांसपोर्ट थ्योरम अब ये बता क्या रहा है कि जो भी चेंज सिस्टम के अंदर आ रही है व्हाट इज द सिस्टम डिपेंड्स ऑन थ्री फैक्टर्स 
rate of change within the control volume with respect to time, the unsteady effect, partial by partial T term, this first term. And what is going out of the control volume and what is coming into the control volume, right? At which rate? The rate at which the property is going out of the control volume and the rate at which the property is coming into the control volume. The difference of that, the net mass flow rate. Okay. Yes, sir. So the first term is the unsteady term and the other two terms are the mass flow rates. The not the mass flow rate, but the property flow rates. Whatever the property we will design decide. This question is valid for fixed control volume because we have defined that it is fixed control volume and this is only valid for one inlet and one outlet. If there are more than one inlet and more than one outlet, what we'll do? We'll talk about the net. We'll combine the sum of the, all the inlets and we will all combine the sum of all the outlets and then we'll make them one inlet and one outlet. Clear? Sir, net kis tarah matlab overall sum yes, karke? Jitni bhi mass enter ho hogi, we will add that all, the amount of property all, if I, let me explain it here. Let's say if it was like this, I had a, an inlet here as well. I had an inlet here, I had an inlet here, and there was one outlet here, there was one outlet here. And there was let's say there, there were two outlets and one inlet. So I, what I will do, I will add these three. I will use net in M if it is mass flow rate M dot net in. And similarly, I will add these two and I will use net out if it is mass flow rate, depending upon the definition of the V. Clear? Yes, sir, clear. So if I write the general form of the Reynolds transport theorem, you were on your screen, you are seeing the general form of the Reynolds transport theorem. Now that is very interesting to understand. Let me explain this one first and then we'll Now we can combine the flow rate terms. So what we have done, we have combined the B dot out term minus B dot in term. How we have done this and what's the explanation beyond that is like this. I will explain it with one B. We know that B out is, B dot out is, rho area into velocity, right? Is that so? Yes, sir. If I say I don't know if it is an outlet or if it is an inlet, then B dot would be rho area into velocity, right? Because we are based, based on B dot out, we are adding a positive sign here and based on B dot in, we are adding a negative sign here, right? For the time being, I say I don't know what is B, if it is an inlet or if it is an outlet, I am not clear about that. So what I do, I just take velocity vector and take its dot product with a normal vector, normal to the control surface. So if V dot N is positive, what it will mean? Sir, if positive at outlet. If this is the control surface and the mass is flowing like, let's say the property B is flowing like this into the, it, the area normal of this surface would be always outwards, right? Area normal always outward. Kisi bhi surface ka, uska area normal always 
आउटवर्ड्स होता है सो इन दिस केस वी डॉट एन वुड बी एंटी पैरल राइट वुड बी नेगेटिव इज इट क्लियर इन दिस केस वी डॉट एन वुड बी नेगेटिव दैट इज लेस देन जीरो नेगेटिव साइन फिर जब यही फ्लोरेट इसके क्रॉस चला गया तो अब क्या हुआ अब एरिया नॉर्मल यहां पे इस सरफेस का देखेंगे आप राइट right? सरफेस की दूसरी साइड का इन दैट केस दे आर पैरल एंड बी डॉट एन वुड बी पॉजिटिव ग्रेटर देन जीरो सो इट वुड बी एन आउटफ्लो क्लियर ये ये रिपीट कर कर देंगे इसको एरिया नॉर्मल है 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 आपकी और समझाने के लिए इसको ऐसे लेते हैं लेट्स से से दिस इज़ 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 अ चैनल ठीक जिसमें फ्लो इन और आउट होगा एरिया नॉर्मल ऑलवेज़ मोबाइल फोन मोबाइल फोन एंड यू प्लेस इट ऑन योर हैंड द एरिया नॉर्मल रूफ ठीक है समझ आ रही है द एरिया नॉर्मल ऑफ एनी थिंग दैट इज ऑरिजोंटल वुड बी प्रोवाइड इन योर रूम वुड बी पॉइंटिंग टू वर्ड दी रूफ और द सीलिंग ऑफ योर रूम एंड द एरिया नॉर्मल ऑफ योर सीलिंग वुड बी पॉइंटिंग टू वर्ड दी फ्लोर ऑफ योर रूम ठीक है यस सर सही एरिया नॉर्म ऑफ द वॉल दैट इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू वुड बी पॉइंटिंग टू वर्ड्स यू राइट सो एरिया नॉर्मल इज ऑलवेज परपेंडिकुलर टू दी सरफेस सो इन दिस केस दिस इज अ टू डायमेंशनल बॉडी एंड देयर इज फ्लो अक्रॉस इट द एरिया नॉर्मल ऑफ दिस लेफ्ट सरफेस वुड बी पॉइंटिंग टू वर्ड्स दी दिस डायरेक्शन एंड द एरिया नॉर्मल ऑफ द राइट सरफेस वुड बी पॉइंटिंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन राइट Yes, sir. So if we have flow from this side to this side, here the area normal that is n vector is anti-parallel to the velocity vector, right? So v dot n would be negative for inflow. And on the right side, v and n are parallel, so v dot n would be greater than zero. Clear? Yes, sir. Clear. Moreover, this v dot n will solve many other problems. Let's say if this control surface is like this, what is happening? The area normal would be like this, right? And if the flow is horizontal, like this, it means that whole of the surface is not participating in flow. So v dot n would be equal to. v cos theta so it will automatically account for the amount of flow because the flow beyond this area would pass above right that will not contribute to the control volume and if in if there is another case like if the control surface is horizontal like this the area normal would be vertical like this and if the flow is like this horizontal then v dot n would be what would be v dot n here zero sir so zero it equal to zero because there is no inflow or outflow clear so that's why we have simplified it from row a v to v dot n by using this area normal vector clear yes sir so we can write it in a single term so this is the description of the most generalized form of the renault transport theorem is is the renault transport theorem clear any question in that the inflow and the outflow part and the unsteady part the derivation any question in that uh, 
फाइनेंशियल जो कंट्रोल सिस्टम की तरह एटी टर्म बना लिए इंटीग्रल में जिसमें हमने आउटलेट फ्लो दोनों को कंबाइन कर दिया नेट फ्लो ले लिया है यस नेट इनफ्लो और आउटफ्लो नेट नेट चेंज कह रहे हैं नॉट नेट इनफ्लो और आउटफ्लो वी आर बेसिकली टॉकिंग अबाउट द नेट चेंज इन द सिस्टम इट कैन बी पॉजिटिव और नेगेटिव एंड इट नाउ इट इज जनरलाइज्ड इट डज नॉट लिमिट दैट ओके देयर इज ओनली वन इनफ्लो एंड वन आउटफ्लो देयर कैन बी इनफाइनाइट मेनी inflows and there can be infinite outflows we will be encountering in this term we will be only be having the net the overall result that can be positive or negative that will automatically be included here clear yes sir okay any 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 question else sir ye jo आउटलेट या इनलेट का जो साइन है ये सर ये इसी से ही कम करेंगे ना वी डॉट एन से नाउ वी डॉट एन विल डिसाइड यस इफ देयर इज ओनली वी डॉट एन इज नेगेटिव इट विल मीन इट इज इनलेट एंड इफ वी डॉट एन इज पॉजिटिव इट मींस इट इज आउटलेट एक्सक्यूज मी सर ये जो ये थ्योरम ये किसके लिए एप्लीकेबल है यानी ये इसके लिए बाउंड्रीज जो है नॉन डिफॉर्मेबल होनी चाहिए या फिक्स होनी चाहिए या फिक्स 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 नॉन डिफॉर्मेबल राइट नाउ इट इज ओनली वैलिड फॉर फिक्स नॉन डिफॉर्मेबल वी विल डिस्कस इट्स मॉडिफिकेशन फॉर द मूविंग कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम एज़ वेल देयर देयर माइट नॉट बी एनी मॉडिफिकेशन बट देयर विल बी सम लाइक मैथमेटिकल सिंपलीफिकेशंस इन दैट so we have just discussed this uh, if the control surface and the relationship between the normal vector and the control surface what is what is happening we will further discuss that what is if the flow is steady then there will be no change basically now what's this term is representing this first term partial b by partial t partial by partial t of the control volume what is happening inside the control volume we should say that only The control volume. There should be no change in the control volume. That is, there is the control volume is fixed. The volume, the control volume is always equal to the system because there is only inflow and outflow. There is no source or sink within the control volume. Do you understand this? That there, if the flow is steady, if the system is steady, it means that there is no change in control volume with respect to time this term would be zero the first term there will only change in system because of the inflow and outflow right is it clear yes sir for example in order to explain we take this b as temperature temperature of the system so the temperature of the system will only change when there is change in temperature when there is some hot in fluid coming in and there is some cold fluid going out right there these can be two possibilities that if there is some is hot fluid coming into the system or if the cold fluid is going out these two are the possibilities for changing the system temperature of the system but what happens if i place inside the control volume a sink a sink like let's say there is no inflow into the system but there is no outflow to the system but still the temperature is changing then it means that there is some sink in the control volume there is some thing that is absorbing temperature within the control volume let's say if i i have placed a piece of uh, ice inside the control volume that would be reducing the temperature right so that will include the unsteady effects this term the first term is expressing the unsteady effects the source and the sink within the control volume or if i place a heater inside the control volume the temperature will rise with time also if there is no inflow or outflow of the hot fluid clear yes sir clear yes sir clear so in the next class we will be replacing this b with different properties let's say we will replace it with the mass 
we'll replace it with the capital B with the momentum. So we'll have the three famous equations of uh, Renault transport, uh, three famous equation of the fluid mechanics, the energy equation, the continuity equation, and the momentum equation. We will see how we, when when we replace B with M, which equation we get, we will get the continuity equation. When we replace B with velocity, we'll get the momentum equation. And similarly, when we replace B with uh, another property, we'll get the energy equation. So there can be uh, different equations. We'll study how these equations are important for mechanics by further discussing the null transport theorem and its application. Clear? We'll also solve some problems related to the Renault transport theorem as well. Okay, sir. Any question in this? Any question in today's lecture? Sir, my question is related to the Renault transport theorem. Yes, yes. One minute. 